Good morning and welcome to St. Albans Episcopal Church on this Pentecost Sunday. We're here in Edmonds, Washington, and wherever you are in the world, we are honored that you have welcomed us into your home today. As together we worship the God of all creation as we know him in Jesus of Nazareth. Whether you're with us for an hour or for a lifetime, we hope and trust that you will find this a refuge that nourishes the Holy Spirit within you. Before we, we begin, let us acknowledge that we stand on traditional and ancestral Snohomish Coast Salish land. They cared for this land for millennia before it was taken from them. And we honor them, pray for the wisdom to care for it as well as they and look for ways that we can work together. Our service of worship begins on page three of your bulletin or page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from the uh, book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show how portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The call for this morning is 104. Let us read it responsibly, please. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. They take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all the works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless, Bless the, the Lord, Lord, O my soul. soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans, chapter 8, beginning with the 14th verse. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you to God. Our sequence in today is number, uh, it's on page 21, and it's Spirit of the Living God. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not believe, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, because he abides with you, and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Send out your spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. So I found this poem, and it made me think of the song and of how the Holy Spirit works in us. Effortlessly, Love flows from God into humanity, like a bird who rivers the air without moving her wings. Thus we move in God's world, one in body and soul, though outwardly separate in form. As the source strikes the note, humanity sings. The Holy Spirit is our harpist, and all strings which are touched in love must sound. All strings 
which are touched in love must sound. I want to say that for seven years, the master harpist around here has been our own dear John. And he has helped us to praise God in ways we did not know, in songs we did not yet know, and which are now part of our canon. <laughs> I know that uh, some people only come when you're playing. Uh, what is Teresa's song? Um, for everyone born. For everyone born. What's that? Joys too. Joys too. <laughs> I'm sorry whenever I've let you down. No, because I can't be in five places at once. And that's what a human relationship is like. Sometimes we have to be forgiven. And that's what we're called into a real relationship through the Holy Spirit with God. You know, we say that Jesus, God came to earth in Jesus so that God might know what it means to be human and to redeem humanity. And then as we heard in the gospel, Jesus says, I will send you a new advocate, one who will give you the right words at the right time one who will lead you into all truth. And the truth is this, that you are loved beyond measure. Beyond measure. Whether you deserve it or not. When you're right, or you've really, really messed up. At all times, you are loved. And with that love, you are made free to love other people. To free to, to, to go out in the middle of a rainstorm <laughs> and still find uh, God, the, a joy in life to be able to praise God and to realize, hey, this rain <laughs> is in its own way praising the Creator. Or what we heard in the psalm, there goes that Leviathan. Imagine a whale breaching out of pure joy. So the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, to see God in all things and in all people, uh, regardless of who or what they are. Right. So uh, in that passage from Acts, when Luke, Luke basically, I think, took a map and made, he wanted to make sure that he got every single kind of person in the, king, in the empire that he could. Started in Amphil Parthia, modern day Iran. And then he just kept going east until he got to Rome. All these people in every land, they heard praises of God in their own language. And all the way up in Turkey and Cappadocia, down into Egypt. From north to south, east to west and north to south, they heard the gospel, the good news of God's great creations, God's acts of love, God's powerful acts, but God's acts of love in their own language. Um, this time, this year, I, I caught this, the very end from uh, Cyrene, to Arabia, from an island surrounded by water to the desert. Not just geographic, but geologic. All those places, the Holy Spirit lives and moves and has its being and sweeps through the creation. Now, of course, 
we, we, we know a couple of other countries. Yeah. So that, that list would go on. Luke's, Luke's gospel, would, or the Luke's list of people would go on. What are there now? 200 countries? Something, give or take. Ah, and how many languages? In, in uh, Revelation, we heard from every tribe and language and people and nation. Every way of, every utterance, every way of speaking, every dialect, every sub-dialect, all of them will hear the gospel. All of them will hear the good news. We could extrapolate, and we will, because male and female heard, and slave and free heard, and abled and otherly abled herd, and black and white and red and yellow, brown, they all heard or will hear through you. Straight herd. Gay herd, trans herd, queer herd. What's the, there's another one. What's that? Non-binary herd. They hear children of God, not son or daughter of God. point is this, the, the constrictions that we put, about, put around ourselves about who's in and who's out, to the divine one is an apostasy. Because God looks on each and every one of us and says, you are the best. You're getting better. You are wonderfully made. You are made in the divine image. No matter what you look like. No matter where you came from. No matter how you understand love. Because love in itself is a gift. A divine gift. All of us begin in love. Our origin is in love. And our, uh, our, our goal, our endpoint, our tele, teleos, the Greeks would say, uh, the, the, our point of perfection when we are in eternity is in divine love. This church, our origin is in divine love. And our end point, our goal, the thing that God is calling us to is divine love and manifestations of it. And although all the while we are working that out, we're doing, we're struggling, we make mistakes, we try something new, we, we just, all for divine love self-sacrificing, self-giving, self-denying love in order that the other might be better. Uh, Lee sent, me a, sent us all an email last night about how much was taken in last, uh, uh, yesterday during the, the food drive. I'm going to quote you. You said, I'm sure that many people will have a better life through your efforts. Many people will have a better life. Some of them will have life itself because of your generosity and your leadership and your helping. <laughs> we are called to be ministers and servants of the divine one and to do as God does, which is to look on the thing which is the person who's in front of us 
and say, you are wonderfully made. And we know that when we love another, whether we understand them or not, whether they understand us or not, when we love another and serve our neighbor, we are serving the one who made them, created them. The one who is the source of all love. So send out your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Renew the face of your church. Make us more giving, more caring, more uh, hospitable and welcoming. Make us your sanctuary. And take us to the farthest reaches of the globe. As, mis as ministers and messengers of your grace, forgiving where we are to whom we are sent, loving all of them, and finding in them you. Renew us, O oh Lord. Please stand as you are able and join me in reaffirming our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed found on page 8 of your bulletin, page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, our Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, eternally begotten of God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of faith, of one being with the Father, true and all things are made, for us You got that first part, Jim. Empowering God, you gave the church the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your church today and hear our petitions. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For Chase Lake Community School, West Edmonds Cooperative Preschool, and all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and those who are alone. For Mayor Nelson, Governor Inslee, President Biden, Ukrainian President Zelensky, 
this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For peace and justice in Ethiopia, Yemen, Myanmar, Xinjiang, and the Ukraine. For journalists, diplomats, and peacemakers, and those in Russia opposing the war, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For the victims of the COVID-19 pandemic, the homeless, all who are in hunger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For Templo Emmanuel, the congregations of Grace Church in St. Barnabas, both on Bainbridge Island, and St. Paul's in Bremerton, and for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, and Brian and Melissa, our assisting bishops. Greg, our priest, Jim, our deacon, and for all bishops and all other ministers. For all who serve God and the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for Lana, Dee, Robin, Jackie, Pat, Carrie, Sarah, Susan, Donna, Dorothy, David, Annalise, Joanne, Brian, Amelia, Lilia, Vadim, Debbie, Herman, Gretchen, Hani, and Howard. We thank you, Lord, for Angela Charlie and Anthony Adams in our own congregation. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Adam, veteran with PTSD who died by suicide, Tom Loresca, those who have died through gun violence in Tulsa, Uvalde, and Buffalo, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Grant that gathered and directed by your spirit, we may confess Christ as Lord and combine our diverse gifts with a single passion to continue his mission in this world until we join in your eternal praise. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have died your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life and pray for me also, a sinner. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace 
of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace, heart. Peace, peace, John. Peace, John. Isn't that funny? You know, before the pandemic, we would have to say the peace to everybody. It would take 10 minutes. And then, at the, then during the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, we kind of it went short. And now we're, uh, Eric's been gone. I see him, everybody. He got everybody. <laughs> we're back to the old ways. We're still in the pandemic, but we're back. Are there, I'm thankful for that. Are there any uh, birthdays or anniversaries? Other occasions for Thanksgiving? Well, well, wonders coming up here. I'm going to say that at 8 o'clock. Oh, birthday anniversary. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at 8 o'clock, uh, Sharon Joy got up and said that she wanted to give special thanks for Robin, who, was, uh, who has been hospitalized, but who is uh, going to go home tomorrow or the day after and has made a turnaround, and so Sharon was very um, thankful. As she led us in being thankful for Robin's return to health. What you got? My brother's birthday is on Saturday. Uh -huh. And instead of spending the day with him, celebrating the mic. Oh, the mic right there. Yeah. Instead Thank you, of spending my brother's birthday on Saturday, celebrating his birthday, I'm going to be here working on a friend's wedding. And my brother volunteered to come on his birthday to help clean up after the wedding. So my brother deserves like a blessing for a birthday, but also just extra special. And, and tell me his name again, Ben. 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 He the, his the Lord be with you. Oh. <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> Gracious and loving and good God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life. Particularly right now, we give you thanks for Ben, whose birthday is approaching and who has graciously donating his time and his energy and his insights and his joy on his birthday so that others may have on their wedding day, Greg and Kail Kailani will have a, jo a even more joyous day and a joyful life. Bless uh, Ben this day and every day. And um, we thank you for uh, all the things you, you're teaching us through him. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Amen. Man. Thank you, Wendra, for sharing that good news. Yay. So there are a few announcements, not too many. Um, they're on page 28, 28 <laughs> of, the, of the bulletin. Um, so oh, Eric and Susan are back, and the, the adult Bible study has, is back in person in Zoom, so hybrid. Uh, so that's good. We're thankful for that. Uh, coming up this next weekend, on the 12th, is uh, one of the diocese's uh, meaningful movies. And it's, a, it's about Shirley Chisholm, and, but it's anticipating the Sunday after 19th, the 19th, which is Juneteenth, which, if you don't know, is the day two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation that the slaves in Texas learned that they were free. Two and a half years later. So, um, so there's that meaningful movie. Uh, I, 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 I thought I included the link, but I didn't. So uh, um, the link, will, I can find you the link. Or you can just go to the diocesan website and find the link. OK, so there's that. Uh, thank you, Judy. Yeah, the link is in the, around the parish. Um, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday after is our next vestry meeting. So again, if you have any ideas, projects, concerns, critiques, any of that, please contact one of your vestry members. 
Our celebration of St. Alban is, whose feast day is the 22nd. We're gonna, the, we will celebrate on Saturday the 18th, so two Saturdays from now, and then on the 19th being Father's Day and Juneteenth and John's last day. We will have a very large celebration. Two of them, I think. Two. Um, I said it, it earlier, it's, it's Juneteenth, and I said to John, free at last, free at last. <laughs> they go to San Francisco. Um, oh, I missed this earlier. The Teze is on, there's one more Teze, and that's on the 19th. John's I very. <laughs> but it's going to be virtual. Okay, the nineteenth Tuesday on the nineteenth will be virtual, but it will be in honor of Saint Saint Alban, and it will be um, John's last. Well, it's not John's last gift, his last service gift. But I know that he has been spending a lot of time mapping out the hymns, choosing the hymns through into Advent, so that uh, the next. Our, our subs or our the next the interim minister, music person will not have to do any of that and neither will your rector that's the, <laughs> i know a lot of good hymns How, how's your plane song <laughs> okay are there any other announcements oh uh lee so it was $400 at least was donated yesterday. How many pounds of food? Just, just a little less than $400. Just a, well, by the time all the others, it'll be over $400. Yeah. And then there was uh, $1,200 for pounds of food. Thank you all. Yay. And, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And it. this Wednesday, we have our food distribution in the parking lot out here from 3 to 4.30. Um, so if you know someone who needs food, tell them about it. Or we have some in the congregation who collect the food for them. They're hesitant to come feel embarrassed to come or whatever. If you know of people who need food, you can come by, gather up the food, and give it to them. But this Wednesday, uh, thank you for all your contribution of food. And now we give it, give it away to those who are in desperate need. Children, families, it's wonderful to see the smiles on their face. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Ma'am. Thank you for saying that, Judy. Yeah. Uh, let us walk in love as Christ loved us. Let us sing in love as Christ loved us and as God sang us into being as, uh, as a part of our offertory. And our hymn is She Comes Sailing. Oops. Yep. She Comes Sailing on the Wind, page 22.
12 of your bulletin with Eucharistic prayer too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image, and you taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is, shed for, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves as a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Mary and Joseph, Alban and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation 
to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold, bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and is risen for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
using the post-communion prayer fund on page 16 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, or God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, and the Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. <laughs> Thank you.